We're going to take a quick break and talk about Drizzly. Drizzly is fantastic. It's the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep. And get this, under 60 minutes. It's insane. Yeah, I think what's also great is you can compare prices and shop different places and get your best deal. And you know, you're you're shopping and you're doing a lot of cooking during the holiday season and you're all busy and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I need that bottle of wine. Wrapping presents and you don't want to have to take time to run to the store. Or you forget a gift yeah. and you need it delivered real quickly. Here's the way to do it. You download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. And Drizzly is giving every new customer $5 off their first order. What's that promo code, Seton? Fast5 at checkout. F-A-S-T-5 at checkout. It's drizzly.com. It's not too late to make someone's holiday season a special one. Start now as an Amazon delivery station warehouse associate to earn some extra money for the holidays. You'd help bring joy to thousands near you by preparing packages and loading them up for their final delivery. With night and early morning shifts available through the new year, you'd also have the flexibility to spend time with your loved ones. To start as a delivery station associate, go to Amazon.com slash holiday work. Amazon is a proud equal opportunity employer. Impact of Influence, the tragic story of a powerful South Carolina family and the mysterious deaths that they are linked to. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode. My name is Matt Harris. With me, Seton Tucker. You can find her, S-E-T-O-N Tucker, on Facebook. Or me, Matt Harris, 1028 at gmail.com, also part of the Matt and Ramona Show on WLNK in Charlotte. I'm going to go through a quick timeline before we dive into the arrest that has been made in this case. And again, big thanks to all of you for rating and supporting and sharing the podcast. It means the world to us. When we started this, we had no idea anyone listened other than our spouses, and we would have to force them to. Uh, so it has been great, and we want to thank the Island Packet and Fitz News and Post and Courier, as we've been gathering things from other news sites and getting our own information, a lot of it through a lot of you people reaching out and emailing us and telling us people to contact. So thank you. Okay, here's the timeline we'll get to. Uh, Friday, September 3rd, Alec Murdoch resigns or is forced out from his law firm, where his brother still works, over a case of misappropriated funds. That case is going to be turned over to SLED and forensic accounting. Saturday, the 4th of September, Alec calls 911 and reports he's been shot in the head. He's flown to a hospital in Savannah. On Monday, he releases a statement through his attorneys that said he's heading to rehab for an oxycodone addiction. On September 10th, which is the following Friday, his lawyers make another statement, I believe to the Island Packet, saying that the gunshot wound was not self-inflicted because they hear the reports out there. They also go into more detail about Good Samaritans, two Good Samaritans picking up Alec and taking him to the helicopter, the flight flight. And they also talk about a guy in a truck that shot Alec while he's inspecting the tire of his Mercedes SUV. That brings us to September 14th. An arrest is made. Seton Tucker. So I've looked at the paperwork, and in this paperwork, it says that on September 4th, 2021, co-defendant Richard Alexander Murdoch conspired with Curtis Edward Smith in the area of Old Sakahachi Road for the purpose of Mr. Smith assisting Mr. Murdoch to commit suicide. And he gave this statement to SLED on the 13th, so the day before this was filed. And he says in this statement that he was collecting, he wanted to collect the life insurance policy, which was valued at approximately $10 million. Now, they also received a statement from Mr. Smith the day after on the 14th. And Mr. Smith admits that he was present during the shooting of Mr. Murdoch and to disposing of the firearms, but he does not admit to shooting him. So he got rid of the gun. We don't know where at this point. And it was all a scheme cooked up by Alec Murdoch hiring uh, Curtis Edward Smith to shoot him. Then $10 million would go to Buster Murdoch, Alec's son, sole remaining member of that nuclear family. 
And there is a connection that we found, New York Times found as well, between Curtis Edward Smith and Alec Murdoch. The one we came up with was on 8-15-2013, Alec Murdoch was the attorney for Curtis Edward Smith or Eddie Smith when he reduced a traffic violation, it ended up being speeding. I don't know what it was originally. The New York Times reports that previously in 2013, there was a personal injury lawsuit that Alec Murdoch represented Curtis Eddie Smith in, which was Curtis Eddie Smith v. American Forest Management, uh, LLL, so LLCC. So that is interesting because American Forest Management handles hunting areas, handles wildlife land, and who knows, maybe there's some connection with all the land that the Murdochs owned. And it was also interesting, though, if you look at uh, Curtis's, or I think he goes by Eddie's mom's obituary, his mom was actually a Murdoch. There, yes, there is. We, it's not a real tight connection. They're like second or third or fourth cousins. I believe a lot of Murdochs and Smiths are in that area, but they are distantly related. Now, let's go to the charges against Curtis Edward Smith. Okay, so the, he actually has two sets of charges. Uh, of course, the ones that we were talking about in relation to Alec, where he is facing multiple charges, including assisted suicide, assault and battery of a higher and aggravated nature, pointing and presenting a firearm, insurance fraud, and conspiracy to commit insurance fraud. So he's facing all of those, but in addition to that, there are unrelated charges he has distribution of methamphetamine and possession of marijuana. That's so they went to his house. Right. And that those charges were from Colleton County. And they, those charges were they went to his house to see if there's probably more evidence, et cetera. And the shooting took place in Hampton. But let's talk about the drugs. I mean, obviously we've we're we know that Alec is in rehab for opioid yep. addiction. Right. And we have it that He's involved in drugs. Right, that he's involved. He's distributing methamphetamine. So, so there could be a connection there. He could there be could a drug be a, guy. There could be a connection with the drugs. But we know that they know each other through previous court cases. So it's not a far stretch to think that he might, helping him, might be helping Alec get some drugs. Now, on September 15th, the day after the arrest, on the Today Show, appears Dick Harputlian, who is Alec Murdoch's attorney and a big deal in South Carolina, he was in charge of the South Carolina Democratic Party for a while. He's a very well-known attorney. And he is on the Today Show. And he says that Alec takes full responsibility for the incident. And he explains what happened. Agreed to shoot him in the head. Um, and uh, this fake uh, car breakdown. Uh, 30 minutes later... This guy shooting him in the head. Didn't try to persuade him not to do it. Didn't hesitate at all. I understand that he should not have done that. Curtis Edward Smith. It's almost though putting a lot of blame on Curtis. Granted, I know Curtis Edward Smith is the guy who was there. I get that. I get that. I get that. And I know Alec, they say Alec Murdoch is taking full responsibility. But the idea of, I can't believe he didn't talk him out of it to this guy who's heavily involved in drugs, it appears. Who who knows? And he doesn't even say he pulled the the... the Trigger. He doesn't say pull the trigger, but he does admit Probably. to being involved in some way. Okay, other takeaways from this uh, interview on the Today Show. What are your What are some things you want to mention? So I didn't really know about this. So one thing that Dick Harputlian brings up is that Alec didn't know about this end of life suicide exclusion that was in his life insurance policy. Right, there's because they're saying like, well, well, you wouldn't get the ten million dollars was suicide, right? And Dick Arputlian is, well, he didn't know his insurance. Right, which I've thought that that was really, I mean, for someone who's a lawyer, I've kind of found it hard to believe that he wouldn't understand that. I guess you could write that off as he was heavily into opioids, would know what's going on. Although they say he got off opioids the day this happened, and that's why he was in this deep, deep depression. Not not the only reason, because obviously there's all this stuff happening with Wife two and murdered, son, yes, and, and, and his father died several days. Uh, so... They also mention that he was writing checks to drug dealers. Dick Arpulian mentions the, that's how he was paying for his drugs. For 20 years, he's been writing checks to drug dealers. Right. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't personally have any contact with drug dealers, but, I mean, it seems odd that he would be writing checks because that could be traced back to drug dealers, and it just doesn't seem 
Well, I, I would I, now that I think about it, unusual. It could be possible if, he, if he's writing it out of trust, right? He's writing it out of trust from well, the law firm. Then he could be saying, you know, Curtis Edward Smith is a consultant on this well, case. Well, and something. they, yeah, we talked about that last episode with John Snyder. He did say, kind of explain how that could kind of work, but also. Harputlian does mention in the interview that he did convert client and law firm money for his own use. So he didn't The alleged is out it. the door now. The yes. alleged is out. He's he's admitted it on this interview. What else do you take away that we should mention? So he they also say that he had traveled out of state for this detox from the opioid. So mm-hmm. he is not currently in the state. So a lot of people have been wondering why Smith was arrested and Alec has not been arrested when he is admitted to wrongdoings. And so that could be one reason why. And his lawyer does say in the Today Show interview that he does expect him to be charged. He does. And we're taking a little break to talk about something we have fallen in love with, which is Green Chef. Seton, you just told me you're ready to go order some more, and so am I. Yes, I love it. There's so many, definitely, choices, and everything is pre-portioned, easy to follow. It makes cooking really simple, especially for a weeknight. Yeah, we're so busy, everybody, running around doing their things with kids and whatnot. So just get the Green Chef out. It's one little bag. You're good to go. It's America's number one meal kit for eating well, meaning the best meal kit, whether you're Cato, Paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just want to eat more balanced meals, this is the way to go. And the, and the family loves them? They love them, and I don't have to go to the grocery store. That's right. That is a big thing. They come right, and you don't have to worry about missing an ingredient. Go to greenchef.com slash Murdoch10 and use code Murdoch10, M-U-R-D-A-U-G-H-10, to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. We're going to pause for a moment and talk about Warby Parker. I've used Warby Parker for glasses for a couple of years now, so I'm so happy they're signing on as a sponsor for the podcast. And Seton, I know you love the try. Yes, this is the first time I tried Warby Parker, and I ordered my five pairs for free. And you have five days to try them on. There's no obligation to buy, and they ship for free. And they include a prepaid return label. And I love the selection. I found out I have a wide face. Um, <laughs> and I the Daisy Wides were the ones that worked nice. best for me. And my husband complimented me on them, which is not like him to notice my <laughs> granny readers. And the glasses start at 95 bucks, including prescription lenses. Don't let your FSA or HSA dollars go to waste. Put them to good use on Warby Parker prescription glasses, prescription sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash Murdoch. That's warbyparker.com slash M-U-R-D-A-U-G-H. The next thing that gets crazy to us is that Dick Harputlian says he's working with another attorney of Alex, who is uh, Griffin, and they think they know who did it, or or at least they know someone who knows what happened, uh, a person or persons. And Dick Harputlian is saying, we're going to have this wrapped up by the week. We they just, don't we'll, have the resources that SLED has. Yeah, we don't have really, like, Well, let SLED do it then, maybe. Yeah. That's there's something weird going on there. Definitely unusual along with everything else in and, this case. Exactly. So these two attorneys are going to solve this case, apparently. And the Today Show uh, asked him this question about that. And what would, but, the, what would the motive uh, be? I'm sorry? What would the motive be? Uh, I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. What, what would the motive be, Dick? Um, well, that would reveal who that person is, but it's personal. I mean, the, the motive would be personal. You think you found it interesting that Dick Harputlian was, was stumbling a little? He said he did have some technical difficulties. He said he couldn't hear, but it did definitely seem like that question threw him off a little bit. He's probably nervous if he's closing in on this thing and he doesn't want to give anybody the clue. But personal could be a lot of things, love, money, uh, revenge, and... We don't know if there was life insurance on either Maggie or Paul. Right, but it does seem to indicate personal would mean you have a relationship with whoever exactly. committed this exactly. crime. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so to recap, Alec Murdoch pays a guy who he knows has a relationship with through past legal things and maybe buying drugs, Curtis Edward Smith, to shoot him in the head, kill him, and Buster Murdoch, his son, gets $10 million. Well, if he did shoot him, 
and I'm assuming Alec isn't moving, pretty bad shot. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think if he was on the side of the road, you know, waiting for someone to shoot him, the fact that he only sustained a sled says a minor head injury. injury. Yeah. I, I know that his attorneys say it was a little bit more significant than sled reported. But so, he was in the hospital long. But he, he was only in the hospital for a couple of days. A, a couple of days. So it does seem a little bit suspicious that that if, if you, it, it you was a, a very guy, right if you paid a guy to or i mean he didn't maybe say he's he drugged paid. up we don't know and we don't even know because he doesn't even say he shot him for sure so there is that question or maybe they maybe change his mind he changed his mind uh, which leaves sled with a whole bunch of things to deal with here they've got the the, the the murders of maggie and paul on june 7th that caused the stephen smith case to be reopened because of something they found there so they got that's two they got a boating obstruction charge that has been reported to be floating around uh, about Alex obstructing justice in the fatal boat accident that killed Mallory Beach. We've got Alex getting shot in the head. They got an investigation of the guy who shot Alex in the head and the drugs. And we got SLED investigating misappropriation of funds. That's a lot of investigating for SLED and Murdoch's yeah, going on right keeping, there. Keeping SLED might need to hire a few more employees. Okay, we want to circle back just for a second and give you a some of the 911 call from that June 7th night where Alec found his wife and son murdered. Right, because I think the reason why we need to listen to this is because Alec is saying he wanted to clear everything up about his attempted suicide so that they brought attention back to Maggie and Paul's murders. So we want to play a clip of this, and there is noise on the internet that they hear something on this 911 call. You can listen for yourself and try to hear what Alec might be saying. Uh, let's play that clip. I've been gone. I, I just came back. <laughs> I okay. And was call. anyone else supposed to be call. at your house? Well, we want you to listen to that clip again. Let's play it one more time. Pay attention to what Alec's saying. Some people hear something, some people don't. Let's hear it. I've been gone. I, I just came back. <laughs> Okay, and was anyone else supposed to be at your house? Well, I think it's important that we remember through all this that we don't become complete voyeurs, that there was a lot of sadness and a lot of tragedy involved in all of this, and we do not want to forget no, the lives family, that lost. Family members who are wanting justice for their family, I know that the Smith family feels that way and actually have heard from other sources that Maggie's family is, you know, a little frustrated with the lack of communication and, you know, people have lost loved ones. And people who are related to folks on the fringes of this are having their names being dragged around. So we are cognizant of that. And we just hope that all that justice is found at some point. We want to thank all of you for being here. Were there, oh, there's one little tidbit you found from one of your uh, friends, too, I want to add yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So I guess from a local source, there's kind of been a longstanding legend about the first Randolph Murdoch who started the law firm. He was the first prosecutor, and he was hit by a train. But legend has it was he knew he had cancer prior to that and kind of staged his death so that his family would be able to interesting little tale right especially now considering alec has it might have staged might have tried to stage his own death as he well he, did. he says he did yes and they made a lot of money off of suing railroads we have lots of thank yous uh again new sources island packet post and courier and fitz news and others like uh, the today show that helped us out right there and I want to thank everyone who has reached out to me. I've gotten a ton of Facebook messages with some great tips. I especially want to thank the Murdoch Family Murders, Who Killed Paul and Maggie Facebook sleuth group. They have been tremendously helpful. And tonight I will be on the Tales of the Ed Educated Debutante for a second appearance. I'm excited to talk. Hopefully I will have better technical technological success today. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll be great. You'll be fine. I'm scheduled uh, to be on Cuomo and CNN a few times in the near future, so check that out. Plus Nancy Grace and the Dick Wolf production and a whole bunch more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will talk soon.
It's not too late to make someone's holiday season a special one. Start now as an Amazon delivery station warehouse associate to earn some extra money for the holidays. You'd help bring joy to thousands near you by preparing packages and loading them up for their final delivery. With night and early morning shifts available through the new year, you'd also have the flexibility to spend time with your loved ones. To start as a delivery station associate, go to Amazon.com slash holiday work. Amazon is a proud equal opportunity employer.